So I'm going to start by shortly repeating <laughs> what uh, Mateusz just said in this uh, short announcement, um, just to outline uh, what block is and what Urban Festival is and what's my position within it. Uh, so Block uh, is a non non-profit, non-governmental organization which was established in 2001 in Zagreb, in Croatia. Uh, so it was a, in a way a long time ago. So uh, it was, it functioned as a platform, a rather flexible platform for a larger group of people who are in different ways uh, going through the organization and contributing to the program. Now, since last uh, few years, there's three of us. We are more or less a steady collective. Uh, my colleague Vesna Vukovic, uh, who was the founder of the, uh, of, of the organization, and um, my colleague Ivana Hanacek and me, uh, we co-curate together the Urban Festival. Uh, so uh, we are also, I would like to say, uh, what we were just talking now outside, that we are uh, fully employed in Block, so it's a kind of um, a situation which is not so common in our uh, sector of, uh, let's say, independent culture, that we are not uh, freelancers. Of course, that doesn't mean uh, that our conditions of work are perfect and uh, that they're not uh, sort of precarious. Um, so uh, Block has uh, several activities. Um, our most visible project and maybe biggest project is the Urban Festival, which is a festival of interventions uh, in public space. Uh, it was launched in 2001. So as I said, it was uh, back then um, a group of people um, curating uh, different editions from year to year. It was changing uh, its concept, its theme. And now, uh, since 2009, uh, my colleague and me co-curated. Uh, so it's also an example of a uh, shift of generations uh, in the, this type of cultural projects which were launched in um, our countries uh, around 2000s. Uh, so we also uh, curate a series of lectures and discussions micropolitics, which was launched in 2005. Uh, we also curate exhibitions. Uh, we uh, publish um, different editions connected to our practice. Uh, we also engage in uh, long-term research projects uh, and also a very important part of our activity uh, is uh, the public debate, which sometimes becomes a public struggle concerning the transformation of the public space. But I would like to add not only public space, but also uh, public resources in general, especially um, uh, public uh, resources connected with the production of culture. Um, I mean here um, public uh, cultural institutions seen as a public good. Uh, so Urban Festival is actually uh, based around uh, new artistic productions. Uh, so uh, for, the, uh, for each edition of the festival, we call uh, artists uh, local and foreign as well uh, to do new projects which are based on a research of uh, specific sites and specific local spatial policies. Uh, so we try to foster always a, a very uh, collaborative and interdisciplinary approach since we are also a curatorial collective and this uh, notion of collective work is very important for us. So we also try to, we, not, we, we call, aside from artists, we also call architects, um, urban researchers, um, designers, different people of different backgrounds to add to the program. And we always try to connect them with the local scene, with local activist groups, with the users of specific public spaces, etc. cetera. Um, and the main idea behind uh, Urban Festival is uh, to somehow try to find new ways for reflecting on space as public good. Uh, since public space was something that was previously mentioned in the uh, last two presentations and in the discussions, somehow I will try to um, show through four examples of uh, urban festival projects, uh, how we perceive public space through our um, specific uh, artistic practice. Uh, so the first two projects um, uh, that I would like to talk about, they, they form some kind of a, a pair, let's say. Uh, the first one is uh, the project called uh, The Apartment by Slovenian artists Aleksandra Schuler and Gregor Kamnikar. And the other one was done uh, by Serbian artist Dušica Dražić. It's called The Gap. Uh, so the first uh, project uh, brings us back to 2001, to the very first edition of the Urban Festival in the very center of Zagreb on the main square, um, 
square of Bani Alacic, uh, if, some, if some of you maybe know Zagreb. Uh, so uh, this project, uh, what it did, uh, it created a enclosed area of a private residency with, within a public square. So it should be mentioned that this square is really uh, a central point for Zagreb and for its uh, symbolic life and it's uh, like a public spa space uh, par excellence uh, in this symbolic way. Uh, so what they did is that they took these uh, tapes which are used for, I don't know, construction works or for crime scene and they uh, made this, they sim symbolically um, uh, made this, so to say, walls of their residency. And with a, a tape, they draw uh, the, the layout of the apartment on the floor of the square. Uh, so they had the um, kitchen, the, 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 sorry, the kitchen, the everything, uh, what normal uh, Zagreb apartment has. Uh, and uh, in this way, they were, uh, these, these walls were existing symbolically. Uh, but for the audience, they of course weren't existing because every uh, accidental passerby, every user of the square became a member of the audience watching, uh, having a, a chance to, to make an intrusion into their private life. And uh, it should be also mentioned that this is before uh, CCTV cameras uh, were spread out of Zagreb. This is before the Big Brother show, so before this intrusion of private life of a normal person uh, into the mass media. And then the other project, uh, 10 years after, uh, Dužica Dražić uh, enters a private residential building and with the help of uh, us as curators and organizers, uh, she rents an apartment on the fifth floor. And she, as you can see here on this image, uh, she removes the front door, uh, here, the door on the left. Uh, so she actually creates um, a certain uh, let's say, a public a possibility for a public zone to, to emerge within a private zone. So uh, I wanted to go back one second again to the project uh, apartment, because uh, as you're guessing, here we have with these two projects sort of a positive-negative situation where uh, uh, Slovenian artists take a public space uh, and uh, uh, make a, a, a private space within it, uh, whereas Dušica uh, takes down the doors and creates a possibility for a public space, public situation, communal situation to emerge within a private zone. So um, here, I think what's precisely, what's, what's specifically important is this zone uh, uh, of the border uh, that is the doors or the walls uh, between uh, these two spheres. Uh, and what happens here in this zone, I think, uh, uh, can tell a lot about the, uh, the character of these projects. So to go back to the apartment, um, so they had a, they installed the whole apartment. We had the permission for the municipality for it, and uh, after um, after a peaceful day and a peaceful night, which they spent in the apartment, uh, the problems uh, came about with this uh, morning routines, uh, and when the uh, performer uh, sat on the toilet. Uh, some of the citizens of Zagreb uh, felt that they should call the police because there's a law in Croatia which tells that uh, if you're breaking someone's moral feelings in public space, uh, you are allowed to uh, report it to the police as a breaking of uh, public order. Uh, so when the policeman came, he was obliged to come uh, and he wanted to address uh, the uh, performers, but he was outside of their apartment. Uh, so he was like um, w trying to address them, but they weren't reacting. And the organizers of the festival who stood outside, uh, they told him, well, there's the door, there's the entrance door, go ahead and knock. And he really did that. He really knocked at these symbolic non-existing doors, and then he came to his offenders' uh, performers. Uh, so this uh, true anecdote shows that uh, what is important is that uh, all these projects have to be uh, in a way supported by their audiences. And their audiences here extend to this policeman, to us as organizers. So these projects uh, demand a certain trust from the audience, a certain, uh, 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 they, they become uh, in, a way, in a certain way uh, accomplices in the whole project. And it's also interesting uh, to mention uh, in the project uh, Gap by Dušica Dražić, 
uh, people who were uh, who wanted to visit the apartment uh, who were climbing up the fifth floor, but then decided not to enter because they felt a feeling of uh, distrust, of unease, of fear, because they were in a way afraid of what is waiting behind this open door. So all these examples, I think, uh, draw to two interesting conclusions. And one is that the notion of audience is in projects such as these uh, radically uh, changed and uh, has to be redefined. Uh, so uh, the audience uh, uh, is, is uh, performing the project uh, uh, in a way which um, can change also the course of the project. And what is also here important is uh, the notion of the control. Uh, which is uh, in a way uh, lacking in the projects such as these. So uh, uh, Dushica Dražić also in an in interview that we did with her, she stated that when she uh, embarked on this uh, uh, GAP project, she uh, basically denied the control over the course of the project. And in the end, she decided to finish it earlier uh, than planned because of the way things were evolving with other participants in the projects. And also this project was ended uh, also earlier, although we had the permission, but because of the reactions of the people. Uh, so um, uh, uh, in a way, also in this process, what, is, what was very also important for us as curators and organizers is the fact that our positions here, position here is quite different than when working in a white cube or in a theater behind this protective walls of the institutions. So we are somehow not innocent in this whole process of performing. Uh, and the other conclusion that I would like to draw attention to is the one that maybe tells more about the character of the public sphere itself. Uh, and that is that uh, maybe pu public space shouldn't be perceived only as physical, urban, accessible to all space, but maybe, uh, maybe not even as a space which exists per se, but as a space which is being performed and which is being created through all these specific acts and performances of dif different actors uh, in the field. Um, so uh, this is somehow uh, the way um, uh, also uh, for us, uh, uh, the way we think of through our projects, uh, uh, the way we think about uh, public space. So uh, picking up on these two ideas, uh, I'd like to show um, other two projects uh, which we did recently in 2014 uh, and a few months ago. Uh, so if the apartment and gap projects were about private and public and about this borderline zone between uh, private and public and how to uh, provoke uh, zones of public within private, uh, then in a way we could say that these two projects uh, are about uh, the sphere of um, economic production or industrial production on one side and on the other side the sphere of um, public space as a representative uh, space of the society. Uh, but uh, rather than uh, looking at these two spheres through as a binary opposition, uh, we wanted to, in these two projects specifically, we wanted to show how they connect and how uh, different social and economic processes uh, shape them uh, in, a, in, a, in a common way, shape them uh, in a way that they are all part of the same uh, bigger story. Uh, so in the first project, uh, Sheep Equals City, uh, we collaborated with Rafaela Dražić, and it's also interesting uh, that uh, we are uh, co-signing the project with her. Mm, I will come back to that uh, uh, a bit later. So this was uh, done on the 3rd of May in the center of Rijeka on the Adranski Square. Um, so Rijeka is a city on the northern coast of Croatia. Uh, and uh, we were invited by um, the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art uh, there, who did a project called uh, Copula. So we participated there. Um, uh, and uh, we started to work with uh, Rafaela Dražić. Uh, she's a designer uh, from Zagreb, from uh, Croatia, uh, who did uh, several projects in which she uh, used graphic designs, uh, design as a, in a way, uh, as a social tool to address different political and social questions. And so she was like uh, combining art, activism, and design in a very hybrid and interesting way. Uh, so we called her to collaborate, uh, collaborate already in Urban Festival 11. Uh, 
Uh, and this is how she responded to our call. She said, I thought about the invitation of the Urban Festival curators to participate in this year's edition, primarily as a way of understanding the roles within the pre-established division between players in festival events, artists on the one side, and curators and organizers on the other. Mm, uh, she says, I was interested in whether it is possible to and how to realize uh, activist work within the formal organization of the festival and re-examine defined relations of initiators and authors from the perspective of the everyday practice of graphical designers who does not work for but with someone. Uh, so in this uh, specific project that we realized uh, together with her in 2011, uh, we were dealing with the um, business of uh, biggest creation uh, corporation. Uh, it's, uh, its main business is food industries. It's called Agrocor. Uh, and uh, we were trying to address uh, uh, critically the businesses of this corporation. Uh, and we also added another layer of uh, uh, collaboration uh, in the project since we decided to call different journalists, uh, activists, researchers, designers who were somehow marginalized in the mainstream media when talking critically about this company and its business. I mean, it's like the problems of this company are typical. It has been built up on the war, uh, uh, war gains, uh, muddy business during the war, and now it mistreats um, the workers. It uh, uh, exploits uh, the land. It uh, ruins small producers of the food and so on. It takes on all the European Union um, uh, subsidies and so on. Uh, so of course uh, it also controls a large part of the media, so we wanted somehow to use uh, the, uh, the festival project as a platform for those people who are not having uh, space in, in, in public to, to address uh, this issue critically. Uh, and we gathered uh, several um, uh, a series of materials, visual and textual, which were then designed and uh, they were screened uh, in a guerrilla action to this uh, building, this skyscraper, which is uh, headquarters of the company and it's in the very center of Zagreb. The sk skyscraper itself was built for sports game uh, during Yugoslavia in uh, 1986 for student sports game. So it's also a symbol of a privatized building which was built for public use, uh, with public money and then uh, privatized by this uh, one man who is the owner of the Agrocor company. Uh, so uh, we use the same methodology in this project, which is called Ship, uh, ship Equals City, Broad Jednakograd, uh, as you can see written here that we did in Rijeka. Uh, so we again collaborated with Rafaela, um, and uh, we here we addressed the issue of uh, Rijeka is uh, what was before uh, one of the most important industrial cities uh, in Yugoslavia uh, and in Croatia. Uh, so it's a harbor city and uh, uh, the pillar of its industry, we could say, is the shipyard industry, specifically the shipyard uh, uh, which is called uh, 3rd of May. Uh, which uh, means, uh, which, uh, which was the date uh, of the liberation of Rijeka from fascist occupation, so the 3rd of May of 1945. Uh, the Croatian name is Treci Mai. Uh, so we were referring to this uh, shipyard since at the time when we did the project, uh, it was uh, waiting to be, after its business decreased uh, in uh, last two decades, it was waiting to be uh, privatized uh, and bought up by another private shipyard. Uh, so, um, just as in the project, uh, the previous project uh, with Agrocor company, uh, we also uh, did a thorough research and we contacted a lot of people who are uh, researching the uh, shipbuilding industry and uh, who are um, drawing attention to a different perspective of how to view it. Uh, because the main discourse in Croatia about it is that uh, this uh, industry produces losses, uh, it's a debt maker, it's an industry which uh, is not a contemporary competitive uh, 
market uh, uh, industry which could be competitive on the market, but it's uh, dependent on the public money uh, and so on. So the privatization and the, uh, the decrease of the business of uh, uh, shipbuilding is perceived as something good because then we might get a new plots in the uh, cities on the coast for uh, touristic de development, for resorts, for marinas, etc. And uh, what we wanted to do is to show another story and we found uh, many, we, con uh, we got in contact with many uh, researchers and activists and also workers of the shipyard Trechi Mai uh, who pointed to a different perspective and here is the sentence which say, says uh, sh uh, shipbuilding uh, doesn't produce losses. So we were actually, we found a lot of interesting uh, informations such as that uh, each uh, kuna, which is creation currency that is invested uh, from the state in the shipbuilding, is returned uh, through the taxes in the state as one and a half kuna. So actually the state profits, not losses, by investing in the shipbuilding. And also it's not an industry which has a high uh, profit, high and fast profit, but it's an industry which uh, really thoroughly um, economically uh, affects on uh, all uh, different branches of uh, society, on many subsidiary industries, of many uh, uh, services, uh, on education, on science development, and so on. Um, so, um, well, also, what was uh, something that we came across during the research was the fact that uh, ships that were built uh, in the th Third May shipyard uh, are highly sophisticated products, uh, which due to this long tradition of uh, shipbuilding industry, the strong educational and scientific uh, infrastructure, uh, they were able to build there and, for example, uh, with this product, they were highly competitive even in the 21st century on the international market. Uh, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, sentences which was uh, said a lot of times from the workers especially was that to build a ship uh, is like to build a small city. So that's uh, when we started to think of this uh, 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 equal relation ship equals city. Uh, as we named the project, uh, because not only that uh, building a ship is like building a city, but the shipyard of Trechi Mai, the 3rd of May, literally built up the city of Rijeka. Uh, namely, during uh, socialism, the shipyard was as a huge state company, investing a lot of money in uh, neighborhoods for the workers. These were high-quality high neighborhoods with green zones, with uh, uh, sports uh, uh, infrastructure. They also uh, built, for example, a retirement home, a lot of public infrastructure in the city of Rijeka. They had a, a infrastructure for uh, cultural activities, a very famous uh, cinema club for the workers and other uh, amateurs that wanted to participate. Uh, so the influence of the shipyard on the whole community is much bigger than it's usually presented uh, in the media. Uh, so what we wanted to do with these interventions, this uh, slide says privatization is legalized robbery. Uh, what we wanted to do in this project is to uh, connect this um, element of the space, of urban space, with the uh, sphere of industrial production and to somehow show how they uh, are not, uh, the, you couldn't divide one from the other and expect that one will develop without the other. Uh, so um, we collected these different materials again uh, from our research and from diff different uh, actors uh, which are uh, working with, uh, dealing with the sh uh, shipbuilding industry uh, and we projected them uh, on this uh, location uh, which is, uh, as I said, um, a main square in Rijeka. Um, it's the very center of the city, the beginning of Rijeka's Broadway called Corzo. Uh, but also one thing that was very important for us uh, in terms of location is the fact that we are projecting, as you can see, on the building of Erste Bank. So this is uh, Erste Bank, uh, Erste Steiermerkische Bank, uh, only since uh, mid-2000s uh, when, uh, when it privatized uh, uh, Citibank, so Riečka Banka, uh, which was until then uh, operating there. Uh, so you can still see on the building uh, this small sign uh, of Riečka Banka, uh, the old sign which they left um, to commem commemorate the bank of the city. 
And uh, the reason that, and we, on this uh, specific uh, slide, we superimposed the logo of the shipyard with the uh, formal logo of uh, uh, Riečka Banka, City Bank of Rijeka. And uh, what was important also about this bank is the fact that uh, the bank, uh, when it was uh, uh, not privately owned, and it, when it was the city bank, it was uh, functioning actually as a link between the uh, ship uh, shipbuilding industry, but also other huge industries, uh, and the public budget. So uh, the the bank was. Um, giving cheap loans to the uh, industries, to huge industries, industries which enable them to develop their infrastructure and to develop their business. And on the other hand, it sucked up the surplus value of, the, of these huge companies and uh, uh, distributed it in uh, the public sector. So um, many of the wor workers from the 3rd of May uh, say today that uh, without a national bank which would care for the development of the industry, uh, the, the complex industry such as shipbuilding is actually impossible to maintain with private banks. Uh, so uh, otherwise it's also interesting that uh, the bank was, uh, the, the space in front of the bank was a very popular place for people to hang around uh, and even they named it in front of uh, the bank of Rijeka, Ispred Riječke. So this like is the popular name for this square of the city, although now the bank is not Riječka anymore. And this is the last slide which we showed in this section which calls all the workers to strike. Because while working and researching, we also uh, became close to workers who were uh, very uh, active about their position and very active about um, trying to preserve the production in the company and not letting the uh, production decrease because of different uh, private interests. Uh, and then the next uh, and last project that I will talk about uh, is um, somehow the continuation of this uh, same idea uh, of uh, overlapping the representative city square uh, and, um, uh, and the question of uh, industry and uh, deindustrialization. Uh, so in this project, uh, we collaborated with creation artist and uh, choreographer Selma Banic, and we were invited by a small festival, which is called Culture Shock, uh, to collaborate as urban festival to make a, a project uh, in Križevci, which is a small town uh, near some 80 kilometers from Zagreb. Uh, so, uh, similar to the methodology that we used uh, while collaborating with Rafaela, we also called Selma Banic here to be the co-author together with us, and we started together a research. Um, so, uh, uh, the, the intervention consisted of uh, intervention on the public square and the series of posters. One of the posters you can see here, they were distributed all over the city. And Križevčanka, the name of the project, it means woman from Križevci. Uh, and uh, this uh, 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 image that you can see here of a sort of a medieval section, uh, anatomic section of women's body, uh, is connected with the very beginning uh, of our research, where we found out the story about a woman from the 18th century Križevci uh, called Magda Herucina, and she was, uh, she entered history as a, the last witch because she was accused of witchcraft, uh, but then she was, uh, according to the newly passed law, she was sent to Vienna to the court of uh, Maria Theresia who examined her thoroughly and decided that she is after all not a witch but just a poor uh, mistreated woman and after this case they decided to uh, stop accusing women of witchcraft because it was too expensive to send them to Vienna with the possibility they might come back. Uh, so we were thinking of uh, how, to, um, how to translate this uh, whole history of uh, uh, accusations for witchcraft into today's society. And if this, that was a, a way of uh, systemic violence over women and a way of uh, um, taking uh, control over their uh, work and their uh, ownership, uh, we wanted to see what's, what's the today's analogy. Uh, so we started to research uh, how are the women from Križerci today uh, living and what's their economic position and what's their position 
uh, on labor market. So we found out many interesting informations, which we uh, printed then on these posters. Uh, and the previous one said, uh, burned on this square, which directly referred to the story of Magda. Uh, while this one says, uh, 3,774 women from Križevci live without uh, steady income. So these are some informations that we find out. So it's a, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, 11,000 uh, uh, women living in Križevci, so almost uh, 4,000 living without income. Um, and uh, only uh, 3,000 of them has uh, uh, income out of steady labor. So there is also a huge number of women who are working only temporarily in conditions which can be uh, hardly controlled. Uh, and of course, uh, this whole uh, statistics about uh, unemployment and conditions uh, on the labor market uh, had to be connected with the story of the local industry. So Križevci was a city, it's a town, it's, a, it's, a very, it's rather small, uh, but it was a, a very important industrial center for that part of Croatia from the 19th century on. It developed its industry uh, and um, it had uh, during socialism, it had many factories such as uh, Celik, Kalnichanka, Slon, uh, Križevčanka, etc. So they were producing uh, all kinds of uh, a range, uh, the whole range of products. And we were particularly interested in this uh, factory, which is called Križevčanka, as the project meaning woman from Križevci, which was at the time a common practice to call factories uh, according to uh, female inhabitants of the cities. Uh, and uh, all these factories uh, today are not existing anymore or are existing like uh, with a radically decreased production, uh, employing maybe a few hundred people, even if so, and before they employed uh, thousands of people. So uh, on, our, uh, on one of our research visits to Križevci, we passed by uh, this uh, old complex of Križevčanka, which is now basically in ruins, and we uh, discovered that we can enter, and so we entered the complex, and walking around the halls of the factory, we found uh, this scene, so this was taken in the factory, and uh, these are uh, workers' suits, which were uh, hanged there on a rope, uh, as if they are waiting for workers to come on the next working day and to dress up and start to work, which will not happen, obviously. So we were very impressed by this uh, scene, uh, and we decided in the end that we want to just reenact it again on the public square of Križevci, uh, in the very center of the city. Uh, so this is we collected the, the um, suits and we installed these ropes and made this kind of a triangle between the lamps on the, on the central city, on the central square. And it was not only about bringing the, uh, this, uh, so to say, dirty laundry, as we have an expression in uh, Serbo-Croatian languages to expose dirty laundry, to bring something what was stuck under the carpet uh, in, on the, in the public light, uh, it was not only about bringing it in, in the central square, but it was uh, also commenting on this square itself, because it has uh, its own history of uh, devastation, uh, which uh, was uh, parallel in time with the privatization and closing off of Križevčanka. So this square that you see here uh, was built in 2008, and before this zone was um, also a public square, uh, but it was uh, a green area, it was a park with a very old uh, high trees, uh, with a fountain. It was uh, one of the green oases in the cities, which was like the most popular spot in the town. Uh, whole generations were using it, um, and uh, it was a public space in a real sense of the world. Uh, and then in 2005, the local government decided to make an open call for a project for the renovation of the uh, square, and this was elected. Uh, and uh, they announced to start the cutting off of uh, the trees and um, 
the whole uh, infrastructure that was there before. There was also a local activist uh, petition around it, the whole struggle to preserve the place as it once was, but they uh, didn't succeed, so the place was uh, renovated. And what we can see here that this renovation is actually uh, completely clearing the whole space and making it like a uh, completely clean space uh, with, uh, without any of these elements uh, that made it before uh, likable for the, for the citizens. Uh, so it was obvious that this wasn't done according to the public will, but according to some uh, private interests. Uh, so uh, one of the points to which, um, uh, to which the activists during this initiative for the old square uh, pointed to was the fact that while the city is investing 12 million kunas uh, into this so-called renovation, uh, just a few streets away, the Križevčanka factory is in debt and uh, laying off workers. So why not investing in a factory and working places? Why imposing a renovation which nobody actually wants? And now the square is not used by anyone. It's like a, a, a blank spot in the city. So this is actually the point that we wanted to make with this uh, intervention. It's just a video documentation of the uh, intervention uh, and um, to um, come closer to the conclusions. So if we, um, if we remember of the projects uh, Gap and Apartment, which showed that the private sphere and public sphere are not fixed and that they are easily reversed. Uh, these uh, two projects that I talked about uh, also, uh, we could say that here also we are, we are dealing with the boundary between private and public in a way, since we are talking about uh, privatized companies, privatized banks, uh, and in the end also public space, urban space, which is not anymore led by public interest, but by private interest. Um, so uh, our intention was in this project precisely with this simple ge gesture of uh, displacements of uh, a scene found in a uh, rundown factory of displacing it on the public square uh, to show how these processes are connected. Uh, and also to try to, uh, to, to, to bring something from the private sphere out in the public. Uh, and uh, this was also as the policeman in the uh, apartment project knocked on the door uh, of the unexisting, uh, the, uh, knocked on the unexisting doors. Uh, the same here, uh, the same thing happened here uh, when the um, when the uh, city government uh, found out about the project, uh, we asked for permission. They gave us a permission, but they wanted somehow to soften the whole thing, and they asked us to move it away on a different place, on a different location on the square, which is less visible and which is not actually functioning. And instead of uh, keeping it for the whole festival, they uh, gave us a permission only for three days. So, of course, we disobeyed and we put the workers' uh, suits on the place we wanted. Uh, and the day after, they were uh, removed by the city government. So the whole installation wasn't on for more than 45 hours. Uh, and, uh, but this is also what, what, how we perceive this situation is that this is also part of the project and this reaction also is one of these performing reactions through which public space is created. And this uh, whole story, as also previous projects, definitely show that uh, public space is a space uh, of conflict. And we shouldn't escape from this conflict, but we should work with this conflict and try to show processes which cause it. So uh, in this project, we were uh, in the end very happy because at least for this 48 hours, we managed to uh, transform this square again into a public zone where people were gathering, commenting the installation, and very easily they could understand what we wanted to say and they were uh, discussing the uh, deindustrialization of the city, their own conditions of work, uh, the situation with the public spaces and with, urban, uh, with the local government, and in this way, uh, this uh, public sphere again emerged. Thank you.